Hi everyone, welcome to our presentation for the paper Beyond Optimizing for Clicks, Incorporating Editorial Values in News Recommendation. My name is Fong, we're from the FD Media Group AI team. We worked with a bunch of data scientists and interns on the main focus of bridging the AI and the traditional media world. And the news recommender system we are talking about today is one of our main projects we have done for our organization's newspaper, Head Financial Dialog. So, after is a daily Dutch newspaper, which focuses mainly on business and financial news. It is a strong brand in the Netherlands, and we offer paid subscriptions to our users. So our readers are very relatively very targeted. In this presentation, I will show you how we give our readers personalized reading experience, and at the same time, how we study and incorporate various editorial values in our system, which makes our news recommendations benefit both providers and readers. To achieve that goal, we have two research questions to be answered. Uh, the first one is, um, we want to see whether our current recommender system can effectively still use those two useful recommendations instead of just accurate recommendations. And we will define what usefulness is later. The next one is not noticing that dynamism is one of main editorial values. We want to answer the question whether we can effectively adjust our news recommender to steer our readers towards more dynamic reading behavior while maintaining accuracy at, at the same time. So with these two questions in mind, we started to design our system. The basic problem in our context is as simple as this. Given a user profile and an article, we want to predict whether the users will uh, click on this article or not. Since we are in the news domain, by nature, we always have the item code sub problem, as we would like to recommend new news articles uh, as soon as they are published. So to be able to effectively give our uh, recommendations for continuous newly published articles, we designed our system in a content-based way. We utilize a point-wise learning to rank method, and the recommendations are mainly dependent on the content features from both users and articles. So in the training process, we use uh, users clicks as a positive samples and show but not non click items as the negative samples. Things we uh, do not want overfitting on the negative samples, we perform a sampling step to balancing out the data. Each of these uh, user article pairs is then used to perform feature extraction. The output uh, feature vectors are then used for training our model. We use a GBTT architecture here, which is trained nightly using the user interactions data from the previous seven days. So optimal uh, number of seven days uh, for training were tuned in offline experiments. And as I mentioned, since we uh, always have the item code sub problem, so choice our features are quite important to be able to perform meaningful predictions. We use three kinds of uh, features in our system. The article features, the user features, and the user article interaction features. So, uh, for the article features, we use both the metadata and enrichment of the article contents. The metadata features are like uh, authors and sections which are provided by the journalists. The enrichments of the text are features like uh, sentiment scores and word embeddings. And for the user features, we don't use uh, demographic features considering user privacy as well as model buyers. Instead, we focus mainly on aggregated user reading behavior, such as uh, both read authors and tags for each user. And lastly, the user article features contain both overlap features as well as uh, comparison features, such as whether the author of the article is among the top 10 most read for the user. So finally, we can buy all these uh, three kinds of features uh, into one big feature vector for all the user article pairs. The final vector contains around 40k columns. Well, most of them are categorical features like tags and authors. The 40 of the features can be checked in our supplemental material. Okay, so that's all about the system and feature design from the perspective of data scientists. Since we were in a news organization that has a clear responsibility for society and also upholds our own editorial values, so we don't want to just build our system to be uh, to be as accurate as, pop as possible for users, but we also want to consider the providers as the stakeholders. We want to study whether a news uh, organization's journalistic values can also be considered of importance in the context of algorithmic uh, personalization. So last year, our organization participated in a study by Bastia and Herbert in which journalistic uh, values emerged that are considered important in the context of news recommendation. We follow this study up with our own interviews and meetings between FDA's developers, data scientists, and journalists. And as a result, we defined the editorial values as a following four aspects. 
the ability to surprise users, providing timely and fresh news, yielding more diverse reading behavior, and increasing audience coverage. We conclude those four aspects as four editorial values, which are serendipity, dynamism, diversity, and the coverage. And we set out to explore how we can, uh, how we, uh, how our news operator can effectively incorporate these values. And we do so by performing two user studies. First, we aim to answer the first research questions. Does our current recommender system effectively still use those two useful recommendations? We answer these questions by measuring two, uh, several aspects of recommendations used for nurse and their effects on uh, reading behavior. We selected 115 power users as our target user in the first study. And we conducted the experiment in August 2019 and collected the user interactions for around uh, one month. As a baseline for our study, we consider a uh, manually updated non-personalized top five of highlighted articles. These uh, articles appear on the website in a grid that as the very top of the front page and we present our uh, personalized recommendations from three different uh, sections on the web. We first have uh, my news widget, uh, which shows uh, the top five recommended articles published in the past 24 hours. Then we have a section called Missed Last Week. This section shows the recommended articles published in the last seven days, but not last uh, 24 hours. And we also have a separate page to show you this, all the recommended articles, but they are not on the front page. So. During this test, we measure and compare our readers' reading behavior on manually curated and recommended article lists to get a general sense, uh, general system performance. Uh, to get a sense of general system performance, we also measure the system's accuracy in NECG, precision, and recall. For the diversity measurement, we employ the commonly used uh, intralist diversity. Uh, we measure similarity between articles using different uh, article attributes like authors, tags, sections, and word embeddings. And for the dynamism, we measure uh, the interleasing diversity by checking how much an uh, item article list changes between two updates. We model the serendipity as an article's uh, dissimilarity to a reader's reading, historical reading be behavior. And lastly, for coverage, we model it as a percentage of daily published articles that are shown to users. So here are some of the results for our first study. I won't go over all the numbers here, but I will give you some insights of our findings. So for accuracy, we find that users' uh, average clicks are relatively high in our recommendations. Recall scores show that over half of the click articles uh, rank among the top 10 recommendations. So we consider uh, our rough recommendations are not bad. And for diversity, we find that our top five recommendations are more diverse in terms of sections and word embeddings, which means that uh, they are more diverse on the topic and content. Uh, well, for the tags, um, they're actually both quite diverse. The, the reason is that there are many hundreds of unique tags in our organization, and they actually usually have a low overlap between uh, articles. That's why they are both quite high on diversity here. And in terms of authors, we see that the highlighted articles show higher diversity than our recommendations. This might be uh, explained by our findings that authors and tags are two of the most important user article features in our models which means that uh, recommendations will tend to be personalized more strongly towards authors and tags that are similar to our, re uh, our user's uh, reading history. For that dy dynamism, we found that our recommendations might not change frequently, but once they change, they uh, introduce more new items into our list. Uh, for serendipity, we found that our manually uh, selected uh, lists are actually more Serendipitous than our recommendations in tags and authors, while our recommendations are a bit more serendipitous on the content. Again, as I mentioned, uh, as I mentioned, uh, our model is more personalized on authors and tags, and that's why they show less serendipity here. And for uh, coverage, we see that our recommendations actually provides a narrow set of uh, articles for each user, which makes sense since we want to we want our system to be personalized. Well, at the same time, if we consider the recommendations for all users, we actually find that the overall coverage of recommended articles is much higher than the manual selection, which is exactly what we expect. And having noticed, noticed uh, 
Dynamism as uh, important editorial values for our news recommend, uh, personalization, we set out to answer our second research question. Can we effectively adjust our news recommender to steer our readers towards more dynamic reading behavior? In order to do this, we perform an intervention study where we bounce our recommender system uh, towards higher dynamism. And for our second user study, it's a pity that we only apply the single use for and those treatments out of the four that we have studied. One reason is that for this, uh, this is the this is some real world constraints like page loading time and some other technical requirements. Another reason is regarding the concerns about exposing users to too many treatments might reduce the quality of our recommendations. So for our Dynamism online test, we set out our original recommender system as a baseline and another system which still use still towards more dynamic dynamic recommendations as a variant. The test involved over one thousand highly active users and our recommendations are showing the same section three sections as I mentioned before. And we utilize a linear re-ranking method to incorporate the article recency to our final ranking scores. So the basic basic idea is that we mix uh, recency with relevance such uh, that more recently published articles will give higher rankings. Uh, as the findings for our second user study, for accuracy, we find none of the sections show statistically a significant difference between the treatment and the baseline, which means that there is actually no big difference in accuracy. Well, at the same time, we do see uh, that a variant recommended system is able to effectively increase Dynamism to users' uh, recommendations without losing accuracy. We also observed that there was some discrepancy in accuracy between the offline results from user study one and the online results in user study two, which is in line with previous work. So, since this work is was done in the contents of real world uh, real website with live users. It is not possible for us to release our user data and pre-trained models. We provide as, ma as many system information as possible in our supplemental materials. Besides that, we also have a few limitations both in system and experiment design. One of the limitations is that we are learning from clicks instead of from user's actual preference. And we also did not consider the presentation barriers in our system design. Well, for this study, uh, we consider these uh, issues out of scope which we find are common in the news domain. And instead of use, instead of directly using the user interactions in our first user study, we actually used uh, the simulated offline evaluation. And our second user study is also a part of a bigger online test for our websites. It was not feasible to um, clean our test users exclusively for recommender system testing. For instance, when we were running our second user study, uh, there were also some other A-B tests running at the same time, like the front page layout changing, which can be uh, which can have some interference to our study. So as our conclusion, uh, throughout all our user studies, we find that uh, this recommendation can benefit both news providers and readers. And from the provider's perspective, an increased overall item coverage means that the content will be served to the intended target audience, which may uh, keep readers more engaged and overall provide economic benefits. And from the news uh, reader's side, uh, benefits inc include being served content readers may not have been found on a non-personalized front page by themselves, and an increased diversity of news consumption and finally, our study also showed that algorithm design with multiple stakeholders might not need to be a trade-off, but they can be fruitful for each, as multiple goals can be achieved at the same time. And that's all. Thank you.